By the afternoon of August 20th, almost 24 hours into the Big Burn, the railroad town of Avery had been successfully evacuated by the Buffalo Soldiers. Now, the troops and the few men left in town found themselves facing a wall of steadily advancing flames. Boarding one last train to the east, they raced across trestles already ablaze, through a furnace so hot the paint melted off the outside of the rail cars. Then, the fire jumped ahead and blocked their way. With nowhere else to go, they were forced back to Avery. They realized if we can't turn this, this fire, it, it's going to burn up. Not only the city, it's going to burn us up, too. At 11 o'clock that night, with the conflagration only half a mile away, the Buffalo soldiers lit a backfire and held their breath. If you time a fire correctly and you light it in front of the main fire, then those flames from the smaller fire will be sucked in. If there's no fuel left to burn, then there's no place for this fire to go. The forward motion of it will be stopped. Plunging at each other like two living animals, the flames met with a roar that must have been heard miles away, remembered one ranger. The tongues of fire seemed to leap up to heaven itself, and after an instant seething, sank to nothingness. Miraculously, Avery was still standing. After the town was saved, newspapers were busy interviewing everybody. And one account in Avery made the comment that my whole attitude about the black race has changed as a result of what I've seen and witnessed from these fellows. <laughs> 